Welcome, modern day mystics, fellow truth seekers, James and Justin, back at it again with another reaction. This one is by the Redeemed Zoomer, and it is about Christian denominations. I'm sure, like, we uh, we reacted to one of this guy's videos before, and it was just kind of showing the basics of Christianity, and now I think he's just going to kind of, like, unpack uh, some of the different ideas within the greater uh, What's a spectrum. Zoomer? Uh, Zoomer, I want to say, is the generation just after Gen X. Or no, that's Millennial, after Millennial. So are they the same as Gen, Gen Z? Yeah, I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's what that is. Okay. But anyway, let's take a look. There's so many different forms of Christianity, so how do we tell them apart, aside from, like, stereotypes that may or may not be true? To put it simply, they're all called Christian because they all worship Christ. They all agree who Jesus Christ is. He's truly human and truly God, he was born of the Virgin Mary, he died for our sins, he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and will return to judge the living and the dead. These are the essentials of Christianity, which are contained in the Nicene Creed, the early church document that all these different churches use. So they're similar in that they're all Christian, but they still have a lot of differences. Let's start with the Baptists. There's a lot that makes Baptists unique, but the main thing is baptism. Wait, no, not like that. Like that, yeah, they don't baptize babies, because they think baptism is a personal and individual choice. Most other Christians say baptism is what makes you Christian, but they think baptism is how you proclaim that you've already become Christian, by having a personal born-again experience, where you go from not Christian to Christian. But, does the amount of water count? Like, could, if in a, in a pinch, if all I had was a cup of water, could I, like, dip your nose in it and be like, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Yeah, I get that's a good question, right? Could I sprinkle someone with water? What you know what I mean? In a pinch is what I'm saying. That's a good question. You're like, I gotta get baptized, we're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a water bottle on. You're baptized. Yeah. All right, you're saved. Okay, good. So they're very individualistic, which is why they're most common in the southern United States, and it's all about a personal relationship for them. So that means the church itself and its religious rituals matter a lot less than having a personal relationship with Jesus. And I'm, than... I'm really surprised that Baptist is the denomination that wouldn't think you had to get baptized, that it was more about the relationship, seeing as you called your de denomination the Baptists. I just, that's strange. Seems backwards almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The religious rituals the church does do, like the Lord's Supper, are really just symbolic. This is called being low church, where the church as an institution doesn't really matter that much. So because the church is really just a fellowship of individual believers, it doesn't really matter how the church is structured as long as they're following the Bible. So that means most independent or non-denominational churches are really just Baptist in terms of their beliefs. Yeah, so that's low church. An example of something more high church would be Anglican or Episcopalian. Episcopal just means they're run by a hierarchy of bishops because the church is very structured. So they try to hold a balance between tradition, reason, and scripture. They're very eclectic, meaning they try to take the best parts from various other traditions, and that means they have a lot of diversity of belief. Some Anglicans seem more Catholic, and others seem more Protestant. And a lot of Anglicans see themselves as like a middle way between the two. So it's difficult to understand what Anglicanism really is, but don't worry, they don't understand it either. But yeah, so Anglicanism still has a very rich tradition, and a lot of the prayers and hymn books that people use come from Anglicanism. In fact, a whole new branch sprung out of the Anglican tradition, the Methodists, or Wesleyans. You know that little triangle the Anglicans have of reason, scripture, and tradition? The Methodists add a fourth point and turn it into a quadrilateral. They add spiritual experience because John Wesley's whole deal was he wanted the Anglican church to be more spiritually active. Fire represents the Holy Spirit, which is why a lot of- Wait a sec. Yeah. We could unpack that little box they yeah. got there for a bit. I wonder if they were dabbling into some mysticism over on that experience side. Well, I don't know. I'm just saying, what is spiritual experience? What is it? Yeah. I'm getting a little tired of people coming, you know, straggling forward and being like, I'll be like, well, would you explain your spiritual experience? They'll be like, it's like a feeling. I'm like, eh, it doesn't count. If it's a feeling, it doesn't count. How's that? How's it count? Yeah. You know? I'm being aggressive. I gotta chill out, calm down, goose for a bar. But I mean, how, where does a feelingsy feeling meet yeah. meet metaphysical reality? How do you how do you quantify something a spiritual experience? 
Well, I don't know. It's very hard. I think uh, because it seems like it's something personal, right? And it's not going to be something that anyone else is going to be able to validate for you except for yourself if you're going through it, right? If you, you know yeah. what I mean? Like if I can validate that to myself, then guess what? I can validate whatever the hells I want to myself. Yeah, you know? very possible. Y'all, yeah. guess what? I'm on the inside. I'm not what I, I'm actually, you know. I'm whatever I want to you to think I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, we can't... Fa- then it gets into just nonsense world, you know? Well, well people, people experience altered states. However, they may come and they don't know how to properly inter- interpret them. So they put on top of those things that they can't explain, a whole bunch of ideas, concepts, and beliefs. And so... And then that's what becomes now the spiritual experience, at least from what I've observed of this whole thing. Yeah, okay. Let's leave it at that. A Methodist logos have fire in them. And of the three persons of the Trinity, Methodist thinking is centered a lot around the Holy Spirit who empowers us on the path or the method that leads to righteousness. And we all have free will to join or leave the path. Free will is very important for Methodists. And at the end of the path is entire sanctification, where in this life we can improve so much that we stop sinning completely. And along this path, there's a lot of service to the poor and working for justice. Stop sinning completely? I don't know. Have you ever met anyone who can stop sinning completely? Or what's sinning? Maybe that's a better question. What do you classify as sinning? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's true. Yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know. I've never met any perfect people, but... Uh, yeah. As we strive for spiritual perfection... And certain groups arose out of Methodism that really focused on that part. The holiness movement says that if you really have the spirit, you're going to pursue holiness. And the Pentecostals go a step further and say that that includes speaking in tongues. So groups that spawned from these movements include the Salvation Army, the ones that are always doing charity and stuff, the Church of the Nazarene, a big holiness denomination, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, another big holiness denomination from Nigeria, the Assemblies of God, a Pentecostal group, and the Church of God in Christ, a historically black American denomination. All right. Next. We were part of the Nazarene yes. church growing up, part of that, that holiness movement. And that's a whole different thing. I think, actually, Nazarenes did believe in complete, total, uh, uh, what was the term that he used? I, I can't remember. But the, the, the not sinning thing, I think they believed that some of the people could actually like get to a point where they did not sin no more. I remember that. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think the quest for better living, you know, and all that stuff within those denominations is is good. You know, it, it, you, how are you gonna, you know, give someone a tough time, whether they're Pentecostal, Nazarene, pursuing a higher, better way of living, right? But. Next up are the Lutherans. They're named after Martin Luther because they come right out of the Reformation, where Luther wanted people to preach the gospel. So basically, Luther thought the Bible had two messages, really, law and gospel. The law explains that you're not good enough, but the gospel says that's okay because Jesus is. So Lutheran thinking of the three persons of the Trinity is centered a lot around Jesus and his gospel, and they want to make sure that the gospel message is pure. Are you looking to your own personal experiences to know if you're saved? Don't do that. You need to be looking to Christ. How do you know that what Christ did is for you? It was given to you in baptism, because baptism saves. Want to experience Jesus now? Again, don't look to your personal experiences. You need to look to something outside of yourself. Specifically, the Lord's Supper, where the body and blood of Christ are really present and given for you. That's right. When Jesus said, this is my body, he meant it because is means is. Seriously, you do not want to start a fight with a Lutheran about this. Now, some Lutherans didn't like how the Lutheran tradition was so skeptical of personal experience and they wanted to focus more on it. So they became the Pietists. And that's how you get things like the Evangelical Free Church. Presbyterians are up next. They're also straight out of the Reformation and their beliefs are called Reformed. Reformed thinking is very God-centered, so they probably focus most on God the Father. Specifically, God's sovereignty and God's covenant. What? Sorry. The way God's in control of everything and the promises that God makes. Yeah, Reformed people use a lot of big theology words like infralapsarian, but the reason they use big theology words is because they're very focused on theology, because theology is the study of God, and they're very focused on God. They're theology nerds, and they're also kind of stereotyped as the nerdy Christians in general, and they're the most likely of all Christians to study science and stuff. But yeah, anyway, God's sovereignty and covenant are the lens through which the Reformed view all of Christianity. 
If God's in control of everything, that includes who will and will not be saved. Yes, Reformed theology is Calvinism, which is the idea that God's already decided whether or not you'll be saved. However, everyone forgets about this part of Calvinism, which is that baptism is a covenant promise that saves as long as you don't reject the promise. So salvation's still by faith alone. Reformed worship is also very regulated, so if you like speaking in tongues, altar calls, wild worship music, and images of Christ, don't expect to have fun at a Presbyterian church. Uh, the, I think the guy who's making this video, he, he must be on the other side of that thing of, of free will, because he definitely had his point there where he was not on the Calvinist side. Uh, growing up in the church and and hanging around with a lot of different types of Christians. There's a big group of Christians that believe that there's no free will, and there's a big group of Christians that do believe that there is free will. So I think I think he kind of took his stance on that side there. And I was a little, uh, I was interested with the Presbyterian, Presbyterian church there, um, said it took a big stance on science. I have a little bit of experience with Presbyterian church, been to a few Presbyterian churches. Um, and they seem very similar to... Baptists, in my opinion, like their services, they're very similar in the, the limited, I guess, experiences that I have. What's with the telltale I, sign of a Presbyterian church? It just, it's a standard evangelical uh, process. Everyone comes in on Sunday morning, sits in a pew, sings some songs, listen to the pastor, maybe take communion that day, and then wrap it up with another song, go home. Maybe throw an altar call in there or something. But, and which is pretty typical for most evangelical, you know, services it doesn't matter if you're pentecostal nazarene baptist they all kind of do that and another i guess one last note i know i'm stopping a lot here um but uh all these like big debating top points that he's bringing out here i don't know if the people like the average christian even gets caught up in any of that i think like a, there's a most christians you know they either read their Bibles, pray, go to church, and stuff like that. But they don't really get caught up in a lot of these debate points. And I think they save it for, like, the the guys, the people who are running the church, and they all squabble over it. Because I don't, like, the, the majority of Christians, I don't see them fighting so much about all this. Stuff. I don't even know what a majority of a Christian would be. I just know that I have definitely seen people squabble. I know that there's... You know, I'm, I'm confused by... No, I'm not a normal person, in case you haven't, you know, guessed it yet. So I don't get why anybody does anything normally at all. I don't get it. And so I don't understand your denominations. I don't understand how, why a Nazarene... We did grow up Nazarene. Yeah. And I don't get... I didn't get why. They, they were against dancing, weren't they? Yeah. Didn't David, like, dance Playing around? cards on Sunday. So I'm having trouble following this. If I'm honest, you know, I probably got a touch of the ADD, a touch of the this, and a touch of the that. And I'm finding this really boring. Yeah. And any take on it and any opinion on it is Boringsville. I want it to be more life pumped into this. I get I get distracted by other interpret. What's going on with James? I'm distracted by that and distracted by this and distracted by that. If you were to ask me to do a quiz on denominationalism, I'd light the thing on fire and say, I don't care. Well, you know, what did the Lord say? What did Jesus say at the end of the day? And so for those of you that stuck through that breakdown that I just had... Mm -hmm. We will continue the video now, and you can decide for yourselves. But that's my official answer. Is, okay. It's too boring to care. Instead, you'll find very orderly worship, psalm singing, people sitting in the back of the church, and, of course, Holy Communion, where we do receive the body and blood of Christ, but he's not physically in the elements. We receive him spiritually. And <sighs> Presbyterians aren't the only Reformed churches. There's also the Dutch Reformed, the Swiss Reformed, and maybe even the Puritan Congregationalists who have basically the same theology, they're only different in terms of geography and history. There's also a big group of people that call themselves Reformed. The Dutch one looked like pin the triangle on the cross game. You know what I mean? Didn't <laughs> oh, it look like a game? Like, <laughs> oh, like, like uh, throw the triangle onto the cross? <laughs> but they're only defining Reformed as believing in predestination and not necessarily the other parts of Reformed theology. There's also a group of Protestants that were Protestant before Protestants existed. And speaking of which, all these groups that I've talked about so far are called Protestant. But what does that even mean? Is there anything that unites all Protestants? Yes, there are the traditional Protestant beliefs, but a lot of modern Protestants don't really believe those anymore. Especially because each Protestant tradition has liberal-leaning and conservative-leaning denominations that each have their own liberal and conservative factions within them, and the most radically liberal ones don't believe anything Christian anymore at all. There are some Protestant churches that have lesbian pastors and leftist political symbols, 
and there's others that make the news for their right-wing beliefs. Some Protestant churches look very traditional and similar to Catholics. Other Protestant churches look very contemporary and don't resemble a traditional church at all. So is there anything that all of these different Protestant groups agree on? Yes. Any guesses? Jesus. Jesus. They all agree on Jesus, correct? Yeah. Were any of them like, I don't know so much about Jesus. How could they be a Christian then? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, there actually is one thing. It's that the Bible has more authority than the church. A conservative <laughs> Lutheran would say what? both the Bible and church tradition have a lot of authority, but the Bible has slightly more. A fundamentalist Baptist would say the Bible has a lot of authority, and church tradition doesn't have any authority at all, really. A progressive pastor would say neither the Bible nor church tradition have much authority. That is a wild outfit. Look at her glasses. <laughs> My wife wears caddy glasses, but, but that's are, taking it to oh, her. Yeah. That's superhero oh, glasses. Level. Those are goggles. And it's hilarious because she's wearing a Catholic garb, but it looks like it's tight. It looks yes. like she's wearing a tight <laughs> It Catholic looks like a Catholic <laughs> costume. You know what I mean? With like sexy Catholic priest. Take it easy. <laughs> Authority at all, but the Bible still has a little bit more given the church's history of patriarchy and colonization. And that's why there are so many different Protestant denominations. Because if the ultimate authority is the Bible and not the church, it's okay for the church to split if people have different interpretations of parts of the Bible. And for Protestants, that's okay. They can still be united spiritually as the church, and they can usually still take communion with each other. Now, this idea is rejected by all the churches I'm about to go over because they all claim to be the one true church founded by Jeez. Jesus and his apostles. And they think that the church assembled the Bible, so the Bible can't possibly have more authority than the church. The most famous of these churches are the Catholics. They think that St. Peter was given the keys to the kingdom by Jesus, making him the leader of the church, or the Pope. And that ever since him, there's been an unbroken chain of popes leading all the way up to the current Pope. And the authority that Peter had is currently held by the Pope because of apostolic succession. It's all about authority for the Catholics. They think the Church has the authority to forgive sins, cast out demons, and interpret the scriptures. So the Church itself is the kingdom of God here on earth, and salvation is about participating in the Church. So that's why they reject salvation by faith alone. They'd still say salvation is by faith, but faith includes cooperating with grace and participating in the Faith is dead without action. It's a verse, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering when this was all going to come up because he, uh, I noticed everything at the beginning was all evangelical stuff. Uh, but he's right, man. Like uh, when I grew up, I was also always fascinated by Catholics because when I grew up, there was no internet and there was no, I knew no one who was Catholic, like, right. li like real Catholic. Yeah. I had kids that went to Catholic school, but they weren't practicing. Yeah. Um, but now we live in a world where you can go on TikTok and there's like Catholic priests on there and people like come on and like talk with them and like, yeah, what he's saying is like, right. They believe like the church is the authority. Like you do not like you, it's through the building that you get thine to heaven. It's mm -hmm. like, and the, the Pope is like a direct descendant from Peter. Well, the good news is you can just say whatever you're sure a <laughs> bunch of people will agree with and you will find a home with some people. That's the good news. The no. bad news is you can't read people's thoughts and you have no idea why anyone's really doing anything. <laughs> you can't actually read people's thoughts. Yeah. So at the end of the day, anything's anything. <laughs> the church, specifically through the seven sacraments, the most important of which is Holy Communion, where the church has the authority to do a miracle called transubstantiation, where the bread and wine literally change into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. This is how we commune with Christ literally. and all of his... <laughs> literally, literally, though. You're literally eating flesh and blood. That's mm. kind of cannibalistic, isn't it? Sounds delicious. Oh, jeez. <laughs> What's the word? What was the word again? Transubstantiation? Yeah, something like that. I can't even remember. Transubstantiation is delicious. <laughs> oh, jeez. Pass me another hunk of the body. <laughs> all right, church. On earth and in heaven. Yes, they believe that saints that have died and gone to heaven are still part of the church which is why they pray to the saints and the Virgin Mary, not out of worshipping them, but just like asking them to pray for us. What else do they teach? Well, it's a lot, so I can't really tell you, but you could look it up for yourself, because Catholics have an answer to basically everything. Catholicism really wants to figure out everything about everything, and that's how they helped contribute to the development of modern... It's a terrible haircut! <laughs> <laughs> it's a freaking oh, terrible God. haircut! Yeah. What were people thinking back then? Like, this is... To it be was... holy is to look as much like a penis as possible. 
<laughs> oh god i was like well there probably was that's why they were like gowns and stuff and like made themselves <laughs> as repulsive and like unsexually attractive as possible because you weren't supposed to you, if you're a priest if you're a priest you good can't lord man sex. let's molest each other like gentlemen oh, and god. <laughs> cut our hairs ugly and keep those wretched women away from us and <laughs> oh, drink this corpse blood science now, the Eastern That's Orthodox wacky, are the exact opposite. It. <laughs> they leave most things up to mystery, and they even try to define God in terms of what he isn't. And they say we can't even really understand what God is, we can only perceive God's energies through our mystical, spiritual experiences. The Eastern Orthodox also claim to be the one true church, but they had a big, nasty divorce with the Catholics about a thousand years ago. It was about a lot of things, but the biggest one was about the Trinity. You see, all the churches I've already talked about have this model of the Trinity, where the Son is eternally begotten of the Father, and the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. But the Orthodox reject that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Son, saying that the Holy Spirit only proceeds from the Father. Why? It's complicated, but the biggest reason is that it's not part of their tradition. And in Orthodoxy, tradition matters most. That's why all the trad people online often end up becoming Orthodox. So how does salvation work? Now, the Orthodox reject Western ideas of original sin, and they don't like to talk in legal terms the way that the Catholics and Protestants do. So instead, they talk about theosis, where salvation is about oneness with God and uniting ourselves to God and sort of partaking in the divine nature itself. And that happens through the holy mysteries of the church. And there's another group of churches that claim to be the Orthodox churches. The Oriental Orthodox ones, these churches, you don't hear about them as much because they've spent most of their existence as islands of Christianity in a vast sea of Islam. And they're pretty similar to the Eastern Orthodox, so why have they been separate for almost 1600 years? Well, you see, the Eastern Orthodox, along with all the other churches we've already discussed, say Jesus has two natures, a fully human nature and a fully divine nature. The Oriental Orthodox say that Jesus has one nature that's fully human and fully divine. I know. Would it be evil to meditate on the Lord and consider in deep, serious meditation how many times the Lord would have had to take a dumpeth on the earth? How many times he would have gotten diarrhea from a bad leavened bread? You know, or how many times he would have had to find a good place to urinate? Or had been grouchy from a bad night's sleep? Or been horny because of a woman? Yeah. You know what I mean? If he was fully human, we all eat a bad taco every now and then. We all, you know, yeah. stub our toe and get angry. He's fully human. But fully divine, too. Hmm. And, uh... No, I think it's You know a what good, I'm saying here? I think it's good to, rem to, to remember exactly what you're talking about. I think that that is worth something. Pondering deeply is the, the the human element of Jesus. People get crazy, you know what I mean? Like, did he, how, what, was Mary's body messed up after she delivered him? Like, no, it was perfect, and she didn't even need a stitch. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, people get wacky with their defense of, of divinity. Yeah. And by the way, they don't just do that with Jesus. They do that with, like, living people, too. Like, you know... No, he doesn't go to the bathroom, and no, he doesn't. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I've ac I've actually asked people like what you about the arousal thing. I was like, do you think Jesus ever had like, you know, morning wood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and they were like, no, no. I was like, you're not thinking that like, yeah, like he wasn't fully human then. Yeah, they, like that didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. Like, 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 like. So, like, I think that's definitely worth thinking about. Just other one side note. I just want to spin off one. Spin off uh, yeah, go Eastern, nuts. Orthodox, a point. Eastern Orthodox. Eastern um, Orthodox. That that's fascinating. I wish I was like I feel like I zoned out for a second there when they were talking about the mystic mystic nature of that. That is interesting. And uh, there's an area where I work in where there's actually a church like that in the area. What is nearby? That? Um, in Sutton, you guys probably wouldn't know by no. What are you talking? Oh, about? they have a church where like they have that cross. It's like a it's like a regular cross oh, with another thing underneath, another yes. line underneath it. When I was working with you, remember we saw that thing. Yes, we were yeah, like, what like, is this? That? Is cool. I'm yeah. gonna go in here. It was yeah. like a mini castle. Uh, but yeah, no, interesting. It would be cool. We should maybe like in we should like you know infiltrate that yeah. place and record it. And they were the only one that were like really talking about the mystical side of things, which kind of interesting. interesting in hindsight. Yeah. Oh, it's completely different. Okay, so that's pretty much all of them. 
There's some that I didn't include because it's unclear whether they believe the essentials of Christianity, and there's also some I didn't include because they very clearly do not believe the essentials of Christianity. <laughs> but the vast majority of the churches do believe the essentials. And that's what's really important. Because they do disagree on a lot. Why is it clear that those people that he listed don't in, uh, include the essentials? Well, because the person who's making this, uh, because he's a redeemer zoomed, I'm yeah. sure he is a part of that gray circle on the screen there that believes the essentials, and if you believe the essentials, that's what makes a Christian. So from his perspective, right. that's what he is saying. So the other groups, whether it's Jehovah's Witness, I noticed was on that list, right. Mormons, they have like way oh, other Yeah, 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 good like, point, good ideas. point. I just, I saw like the rainbow flag and I was like, how do you know that somebody that's not gay believes in Jesus? Yeah. They could, Yeah, like obviously. All right, let's let them close it out. A lot, and there's a lot of diversity within these churches. But the fact that they all can agree on these essentials suggests that the essentials are true. And all this diversity is what we should expect from a religion that has covered the entire world over the course of 2,000 years. True. I feel like I could have like hit the space bar and stopped that movie, that video like a thousand times because there were so many points, so many things you could like debate and talk about and stuff like that. I could have said silly mm, stuff, yeah, but yeah. throw a debate at me, throw yeah, yeah. quiz me. What's a debate but, thing that you uh, could debate? One, one was maybe the, the the free will, whether or not you believe there's free will or oh, yeah, not, not free will. Let's it's, not get into exactly, it. Exactly, it's too much. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys liked our reaction on this one. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, share this with a friend and everyone. Until next time, stay, stay spiritual. spiritual.